All right, let's get into the tools here a little bit that we will use in Adobe Premiere. So we've got our footage from the last video um, pasted in here. There's three different clips, all with their attached audio below them. Um, so in our toolbar right here, we have several things. The selection tool is what we're looking at right here. That'll let us grab video, uh, move it around. We can move it on to different video tracks. Uh, for example, let's say, I don't know why we'd want to do this, but let's say that I want these two videos both playing at the same time. We can even take, if you look, let me zoom in a little bit here. If you look at this yellow bar going across here, this is an adjustment bar that we can use for several different things actually. Right now it's set to opacity, you can see right here. So if I drag this bar, if I click and drag, you can see the number below 37.5, 35 is what the opacity is at. So now you can see that they're both there at the same time. If I hit play, anyway, I mean, I'm not saying this is a useful effect, I'm just kind of pointing out the different things that uh, we can do with the select tool. I'm going to make this kind of a more normal size again. And let's get this back up kind of in the middle. Okay, so um, I'm going to zoom out so that I can see more of the sequence. If I hit the minus key on the keyboard, that's going to zoom out the sequence because I have the sequence selected. If you look here, this orange line around, or yellow, whatever, is showing me which thing I have selected. If I click over here and then hit the minus, oh, actually it did still work. That's weird. But if I click here and hit the minus, now it's affecting this. You can see it getting smaller and bigger. Uh, in like manner, the plus is going to zoom me back in. Minus to zoom out, plus to zoom in. And if you hit the backward slash underneath the backspace, that will adjust the screen so that the whole sequence fits into the screen so you can see everything. Okay, so that's our select key, pretty much. Not a whole lot to it. Or our select tool, pardon. The track select tool. Hmm, honestly, I've never really used this one. I don't know exactly what it does. I think that it will... Like if I try and move just this clip with the selection tool, it's not moving the other clips. You probably noticed that. Now if I click and drag, it'll make a marquee. I can select all of them and then they'll all move. But as far as I know, this track select tool without selecting all of them will move everything. Honestly, I've never really used this one as it may be apparent. Ripple edit. Um, well, this is the one that you can also get to by just being on the selection tool and hovering near the border. You'll notice that it also appears. That's how I use it. Um, I don't usually go to the actual ripple edit tool on the toolbar. Now, I don't remember what the normal setting is. I may have changed this because it'll do the ripple edit when it's yellow but if you hold down the control key, it does a red edit, which I think is just, I don't remember what it's called. Anyway, it's a different kind of edit. And let me show you the difference between the two. I don't want everything selected though. So ripple edit is going to move the clip. It's going to cut it. And it's really convenient because you can see up above that it's actually showing me right here uh, where I'm at. So it makes it really easy to say, okay, well, where did I want to cut it to? Okay, there. Or more probable, you'll be watching it and say, okay, that's right where I want to cut. If you have the magnet on, it will snap to your brow, or your uh, your marker there. So you can see it kind of snaps right to that spot. Okay, now watch what happens when I let go of the mouse and complete the ripple edit. I don't have a space at the beginning of the clip. It actually moved where I was editing. Now that's the beginning of the clip. So again, watch over here. I'm undoing control Z and everything scoots out. It's because the ripple edit moves all of the joining clips as well. 
Uh, that might be a little more clear if I do it here. So I'm going to do the same thing here to this clip. I'm moving it out. And then watch, I'm not going to get a big space right here in the middle. What's going to happen is it just scoots over so that there's no space between the two clips. If I zoom in there, you can see they are just right next to each other, which normally is what you want. You don't want a big space. But I'm going to Control-Z undo that. Sometimes maybe you do. So if I hit Control, now right now, you can see that that yellow mark is still there. Even if I hit Control, it's not going to go away. So I have to click off of it. Okay, and then I'm holding down Control. And now the red edit tool is appearing. So I'm going to hold and drag the red edit tool. And you'll see if it lets me. There we go. That This does leave a space. Now, there is a time when you might want to use this. For example, let's say that I want to do the effects that I was looking at before where these two clips are right on top of each other. Let's say right at this part where he's ringing the bells, I actually want them both to appear. And I'm going to drop the opacity on this one. You know, but it's got to be right at this moment. Let's say that that's the case. In fact, I have done several edits where I've wanted just that. So now if I do a ripple edit here, it's going to scoot over this video. But, okay, I feel stupid. It actually did move that video over as well. Sometimes it doesn't do that. Um, oh, you know what? I know what I was thinking of. Okay, so let's say I have the space here. I control click ripple delete. Now that moved them too. Huh. Okay, well, ignore everything I'm saying right now. So, um, we can click here. If we did, let's say we did it that way and decided we didn't actually want it that way, or anyway, you can right click on the space that is left and do a ripple delete, which is going to make them come right snug next to each other. Okay, I don't actually want these on top of each other, and I want that opacity back to 100. Okay, so that's our ripple edit tool. There's a rolling edit tool. I'll show you what that does. Um, the purpose of the rolling edit tool is if you have the junction between two clips, so where I made this one end and where I made this one start, let's say I decided that actually I want a little bit less of this clip and a little more of this clip. So I can click right between the two of them and drag to the right. Now it's not working, the reason being that I have the entire clip already here. So I can't make more of this clip appear. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I'll show you by making a ripple edit, making it a little smaller. Okay, now I can either go here, or again, this is one that just shows up on its own, the rolling edit tool. If I hover, instead of right on the beginning or end of a clip, if I hover right in between the clips, you'll see it show up. So I can drag that. Honestly, I don't really ever use this tool because, I don't know, that's not just not the way I edit. But it's useful to know what it does. So that's what it does. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that's your rolling edit tool. Your rate stretch tool is useful if, um, let me do the one at the end. So let's say I change, I'll show you where this is really useful. Okay, I want to slow this clip down. So instead of doing opacity, what I want to do is time remapping. I want to change the speed of the clip. I, I get to this option by clicking on opacity, going to time remapping, speed. So now this yellow bar isn't the opacity, now it's the speed. And it's in percentage, so I'm at 110% of the original speed, 160, I want to be at 200, let's say. Okay, so I'm there, that's great, but, I mean, it's not doing anything to my audio. Look at that, now my audio, because the 200% is half of my video. That's kind of a problem. If we watch it, it doesn't, it doesn't line up anymore. This would be more obvious if it was someone talking, but still. So if I do my rate stretch tool, I can grab the audio and, oh, okay, I forgot to tell you something. So because these are linked, the video and the audio, whatever I do to one will automatically happen to the other. So I need to right click and unlink them. Now I can do my rate stretch tool, grab the audio, and because the magnet is on, it's going to snap right to the end of that clip. 
this magnet right here, the snap. Now, it didn't shorten the audio, but what you will notice is gonna sound like chipmunks. Anyway, so that's not super ideal actually, now that I think about it, but that's your rate stretch tool. Your razor tool is very useful. Let me show you how we'd use this. So, um, instead of using in and out points, instead of saying where do I want to use just part of the clip, let's say I want to use two parts of the clip, or let's say it's already in there and I don't want to pull it out, do in and out points. So let's say I want to cut from here to here. I want to take out this middle section and then I want it to resume here. So I'm going to hit, just do a cut right here and again with the with the magnet on, it'll do it exactly where my cursor is if that's the vicinity of where I do it. If I do it over here, obviously it's going to do it there. But okay, control Z, undo that. Um, another way to do this is control K. K is in kangaroo. We'll also put a cut. I'll do that this time. So control K. Now I've got this part cut out. Um, if I hit delete, it's going to take it right out of there. I can ripple delete and it will bring these two snug together. That's your cut tool. You can imagine a lot of things that it would be useful for. Sorry, your razor tool. Slip tool, I'm going to be honest, I've never used. Slide tool, I've never used. Pen tool, I've never used. Hand tool, I've never used. Zoom tool, I don't use because I just use the plus and minus keys. But it does the same thing, just so you know. And if you hit hold down alt, it'll do the unzoom. So, there we go. That's our, uh, our basic toolbar here. Uh, we'll get into some more tools and how to use them in the next video.